everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I am Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, and this is episode 32. If you notice, I've been fooling around with the episodes lately. I normally just call Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous this show, where I stand in front of this scene and give you guys the news. Well, when Arena Commander came out, new ships came out, and hangar patches came out, I didn't want to go back to the old days of making 45 minute to 50 minute long videos. Some of you said, yeah, 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 do that. But I really didn't think those things are necessary. So I dropped a hanger patch update and review. I dropped a, you know, here's the, you know, next great star citizen, next great starship ships in our hangar. And here's our new freelancers in, in there. And I, I felt like they were just misplaced, especially when I did the Let's Play, which I turned into a Let's Pew Pew video. So currently we're on episode 32 because I dropped in a couple of episodes in between. So I'm trying to determine how to keep you guys where you want to be. So Star Citizen AA is going to continue to be the news, okay? We'll come up with a way to, to distinguish that when you get the little YouTube messages that I have a new video. And I've created a new playlist that I think I'm gonna call Let's Pew Pew with Nikki or Let's Pew Pew with Batgirl. And that's gonna be Arena Commander and eventually Star Citizen and Squadron 42 playthrough videos. The hangar reviews and patch reviews, I think I'm gonna leave here and call them their own shows because in their own right, they are news. They're just a more um, micro investigation into the news instead of macro, right? So we're getting into those two little things a lot more. So I, I kind of got confused there for a, a while what I was going to do. So henceforth, Star Citizen AA is going to contain, sorry, contain this type of show and hangar reviews and special updates. And then I'll have that secondary Let's Pew Pew with Nikki or Batgirl. And I'm still, you know, f trying to feed some field, some suggestions for the name for that show. Let's Pew Pew made me laugh and I put that in the last one. So let's see how that goes. All right. So we just got off of a week. Uh, well, at Wednesday would have been eight days. So we're now at 10 days of huge announcements, huge events and occurrences over at the... Star Citizen Cloud Imperium Games Universe, right? So it all started with the end of Wingman's Hangar and the beginning of the Arena Commander module a week ago Wednesday. So Arena Commander started to get pushed late, late, late at night, early, early, early morning, uh, Tuesday into Wednesday, with chat just blowing up with both positive and negative things and people battling each other over whether RSI or Cloud Imperium Games, what they were doing, what was taking them so long. I understand that there's a lot of passionate people that devoted lots of money to this game and just wanted something to play. In the end, they all shut up because Arena Commander came out and a lot of them got to play it early in the morning on Wednesday. Not me, late night on Wednesday. It took forever for that sucker to download, I'm telling you. And they released something that was much more refined than I thought it was going to be. Um, while there were errors and bugs and glitches in the program, most of them were occasional to rare and, not, um, and weren't going to keep you from getting the idea of what the game was and how to play it. Remember, this is pre-alpha, so having a glitch that knocks you out of the game, locks up, doesn't send you another wave, those are all things that were happening. Um, you go to eject and you're still stuck in your ship, or you don't get rearmed or you know re rearmed or repaired every three um, waves, like they said in the messaging that was coming through. None of those were actually breaking the game. They were just things that need to be fixed over time. This isn't the finished product, and I'm very, 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 very um, excited to say that there weren't that many people that were trashing anything. I heard a couple of people and there was a big debate I saw. I'm not sure if it was Reddit or if it was my own forums about um, about Frontier Elite Dangerous versus our you know, Star Citizen and which one was better. Hey guys, there's room for both of these in the, in the universe. You know, there hasn't been a great space sim for so long. The fact that there's two right now 
chill out. So Arena Commander came out, and it's already had a couple of updates, and we'll get to those. Arena Commander, holy cow. And one thing I want you to do is make sure you watch that Let's Pew Pew video. And I did one before that. I'm getting good at this game, and I never expected to. I really wanted to be a big time explorer, but I went out and I got the X-52, and you know, I practiced in War Thunder, and when I got in this game, yeah, people were saying mouse was the way to go. I rocked all the way up to level 12, almost level 13, with an X-55, sorry, X-55 uh, Rhino, HOTUS, and I, 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 I'm telling you, I was on the seat of my pants, and my hands were stuck like this for a day after getting there. Um, I'm not playing so much right now, and we'll get to that right after uh, we talk about what happened in the last 48 hours. So then we went to the last episode of um, Wingman's Hangar. by Eric. Thank you so much for doing it. Now get to work. It's the best I could say. It was reviewing a lot of great moments. I got to see my, my face on there a couple of times. And whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But that was, you know, made me smile. Um, there was so much that I saw in that episode that made me think, this guy is the is a president in that company, right? He's running the Austin office and he's taking his time out of his day to bring us all the information that we're looking for about this game. And I don't think that anybody in this universe does this. Um, I've seen some podcasts or video casts by the EverQuest uh, legend or whatever it's called, Landmark. But I haven't seen anything as in-depth of what they're doing here, especially the videos that Sandy has people going inside CIG, right? These things are amazing. So Eric is, you know, standing down, taking over the, you know, back full-time the helm of Austin. Not that he ever lost it, but he's going to be making that studio start pushing harder on getting this game out to us. On a side note, Michael Moreland, who is a big part of Wingman's Hangar, is off on his own. I think he's left Cloud Imperium Games, if I'm not correct, correct me, but I think that was a Facebook entry, and I've questioned a couple of people, and they said, yeah, he's no longer with us. Um, he's going to be doing Galactic Inquiry, which is going to be skip-based and more fun, and it's going to be probably Star Citizen-based, but I wouldn't put it past him to do some other things, too. He's asked Wes from one of my favorite shows, The Whole Truth, which I've all told you guys to look at you know, quite a number of times, to help him out. Now I'm kind of pissed at Mike that he didn't ask me, but I guess that means I just have to get better at what I do. I'll get better, Mike, and then maybe you'll come back and ask me again. All right, so we got that far, right? So we have... Uh, Oh my God, there's just so much to talk to. I feel like I'm gonna be here all day. All right, so Hangar Patch came out, that done, right? Wingman's Hangar, done. Friday, Saturday. Friday, we get the uh, opportunity to look at the next great Starship finalist being the Redeemer, and I am sorry, Shard Collective, I love your ship, but I can't remember the name as I stand up here, and I don't want to forsake you, so it's going to be down here, okay? Um, both ships were amazing. I had a few issues with the landing gear on the Star Shard Collective's ship, but, you know, I really liked their ship. In the end, Four Horsemen Run won with the Redeemer, which is another ship I really liked, and I'm not disappointed as to which ship won. I'm disappointed into how the contest went. So let's just say this. Evidently, when you have live votes on a live TV show, something like uh, X Factor, You Know You Could Dance, or American Idol, I think that's the one, right? I, I have heard, as I'm swatting around, sorry guys, <laughs> yes, a fly can get into the room, but I've heard that when they have their votes, sometimes their site, whatever, gets taken down. And that's why a lot of them do 24-hour votes, right? And you find out next week. But that wasn't the case here. We weren't going to have a results show. This was a live finalist, this is it, it's over show. And the site went down. And it went down after Four Horsemen went and before Shard Collective's um, ship um, video had run or had finished running. 
In all fairness, audience level and overwhelmingly people were already voting for Force Helm for Horsemen. That's not true. I think it was more split 50-50, but I, I know that it was a big number that were voting for them. So much that I, they don't think that the time that the site was open would have made a difference. I don't know. And I'm not going to sit here and fuel the fire or say anything. Am I disappointed? No. This is a first time run. This is a company that's trying to make a game, trying to keep us involved, and trying to do some extraordinary things that other companies don't do in this business. And I applaud them for taking on a task this large and for bringing us a show that spanned 16 weeks, that spanned hundreds of entries, that spanned the most impressive artwork and ship design that I've seen. And to all those that didn't make it, you know what? You did a great job. To the three top teams, amazing. And I hope that you get everything that's coming to you for the win. And I applaud you all and wish I could buy each and every one of your ships. Well, <laughs> Chris evidently during the last episode said there might be a season two. Who knows, right? I don't know what his exact words were. And wouldn't we like to see all these ships in the game? Yeah, I would. Three gunships? Not sure that's going to work for me. Either way, amazing. So somehow I got into the next great starship just by talking about them putting the ships in the hangar. Well, let's go back to Friday night again. Ships in the hangar. I was getting a feeling, as was everybody else, so it's not like I knew something, that the freelancers were going to be up for sale this weekend. And they were last weekend, right? And they came out in the models that we saw three months ago, February. Anything FPS showed us on his site. And the names of the three models were the DUR, D-U-R, the Long Range Durant, Duration Exploration, whatever you want to call it. The Max, really big ass, I'm sorry, really big butt. Um, huge cargo capacity, almost double the standard freelancer. And of course, the MIS, which is a limited production run, aka for us, limited sale version of the freelancer that is a military missile boat. They were made in very small numbers for the UEE military and are out there for people to buy in limited production and use in their local militias and stuff. I was floored. Now, there's two things that I did. The first thing I did is I upgraded my Freelancer base, which still looks gorgeous, to the Freelancer MIS. Why? It's a limited sale. I could always melt it and, you know, take the money and buy a different version if I didn't like it, right? So that was a no-brainer. Then I had somebody give me a Freelancer. Now, over the course of, as I'm trying to turn this off, over the course of the last year, I've had nice people give me three, maybe four ships. I can't remember. It was probably four. And uh, right now, they're the Retaliator. Thank you so much. The um, Aurora LN, somebody gave me for my birthday. Thank you. And somebody gave me the uh, base Freelancer for um, just so I would have something... Because maybe I said, you know, God, I wish I had the Max. I don't know. But somebody was really, really nice about it. And I upgraded that to the Max. So I took a Freelancer, upgraded it to the MIS, and a Freelancer, and upgraded it to the Max. Why did I pick those two? Well, primarily because I would, wanted to do a review. And the Freelancer, MIS, and the Dur and the Base all share the same frame. And the Freelancer, Max, has a separate frame right? Space frame. So by buying both of those, I was able to do a review of all four ships. And that was the biggie. The max is going to stay in my hangar because when I want to haul things, it's huge and I could haul things. It's limited in its weapons carrying. Here comes that little fruit fly again. It's limited in its, in its cargo and not car in its weapons. But you know what? That's what friends are for, right? Get yourself into a organization like mine, the Enablers, or maybe something huge like LAMP or Imperium or something not so big. And, you know, you could be out there and find friends and 
run on those missions in a ship like the Max that doesn't have a lot of defenses or offensive weapons capability and is really just there to move product from A to B. So the freelancers also took us past two milestones, right? So we passed the $45 million threshold and the $46 million threshold. Both stretch goals were met. So we got the Hedesian artifact and we got the engine tuning kit. Those are in our hangars. Those are in our whatever at some point. We have those things. So for the $47 million goal, Chris put out a poll and said, you know what, do you want us to keep doing this? Do you still want stretch goals? I said no. I said no for two reasons. A, they're going to give us stuff anyway. It's granted, right? They're going to come up with cool things as we hit different numbers. And what's the difference? They just don't have to tell us, right? They're going to tell us what they're using our money for. But we've gotten to a point where if we continue with this, we're going to continue adding things to the game that are just, you know, don't need to be added. Let's work on the game. Let's work on what's there now. They've got a huge task ahead of us. And if you don't believe it, click on the Star Citizen link. You know, go to the RSI webpage, click on Star Citizen in the menu bar, and click on Project Status. That's what I'm doing right now. And hopefully, that'll be over here as we're going on. Okay, so let's look at this and put some perspective on it. Hangar module, done. Still needs a lot of work. I'm sorry, they know this. It's still pre-alpha and they're not putting a ton of effort into this part of the game until all the ships are done and everything is set to go, right? We still haven't, we still have the asteroid hangar that's supposed to be coming to us. Arena Commander, it just came out. We're in version 0.8. We need version 0.9, version 1, version 2, version 3 to come out. All those versions are going to bring different things. The next major update is going to let us fly the Avenger, right? And then after that, the Scythe and all the other single-seat aircraft that we have. We have a long way to go with that. But what else do we have? First-person shooter, planet side, persistent universe, and Squadron 42. This company has a huge amount of work ahead of them. It's not a small task. It's monumental. This game was never supposed to be like every other game. It was supposed to surpass it. This is going to be the best damn space simulator ever. And in my estimation, it's going to be the biggest damn game ever, right? So they've got a lot on their plate. Why should they have to keep worrying about stretch goals and about what we want? We've bought the game. We've got so much coming. Let them concentrate. Let Sandy concentrate on marketing and getting us cool swag to buy in the store. Let the customer relations team, you know, do their videos and bring us the inside look at CIG. Let Eric and Aaron and Chris and, you know, all the people involved with the game work on the game and get it done instead of coming up with cool ideas for what they could put into the stretch goals from now on. I think we've come far enough. $45 million should have been the end of it at 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. When do we stop? It doesn't mean that we have to stop pledging. What it means is stop making them do more for each dollar that we do pledge. Let's just let that money go where it needs to go. That's to creating this game. All right, so that's me preaching. We're done with that, okay? Sorry if I offended anybody. And it's my opinion, it doesn't have to be yours, right? I'm not here to make you think the way I am. I'm just here to bring you news and some editorial. That was editorial. All right, so we passed through those two marks and we've had two minor updates to the hangar module this week. So we'll talk about those and then we'll skip back to Around the Verse, which was the new show from Ben Lesnick's group over in the Santa Monica office. So we got a couple of patches, 12.1.1 dropped us a fix for the please wait error where you would just see please wait forever and ever and ever and ever on the launcher and it would never do anything. You just start over and get back into it. Then there was 12.2 released and where 
1 was pretty stable and 12 was pretty stable. 12.1 broke a lot of things. Yeah, a lot of things. Um, there's graphic glitches, there's errors, there's key binding things going on with my X55 now with the new XML file that they have. There's so much broken that I tend to think, was this a patch before the one they just released before? And obviously not. They did fix things. I get rearmed every three missions, but every now and then my ship just decides to go to a different view or launch a missile or eject me. <laughs> These are all things that I can't deal with. So also there are glitches like this. I was inside of my constellation just because every time there's a new patch, I go and I run through every ship. And I went through and I noticed that the outside door of the constellation's bathroom is a little shiny. So I go in, I go, hey, that's pretty cool. I see a reflection, not me. It's the reflection of the hangar door that's in front of the ship, which is good because that mirror faces the front. The big problem was, as soon as I stopped looking at the mirror, I was glitched and broken, and that wasn't happening before. Um, it was also an error when I got into the uh, hangar. My avatar, Curly, started just spinning round and round and round and round and round, just not letting me stop him. I, I understand that when they fix things, other things break. I do, and I'm not... I don't want to be complaining, but after releasing such an amazing product, Arena Commander, to have this take a step back, I'm wondering what is in there that they really needed us to see, or what was broken that really needed to be fixed that broke all these other things. Again, it's alpha, and that's the good news. It's our job to find these glitches and to report them. That's important, because also with 12.2, they released the multiplayer portion of Arena Commander. And the first 250 people, not me, <laughs> were allowed to enter into the Arena Commander multiplayer um, test, right? So that, I have no idea what's going on right now. I know that one person I've done videos with and I'll talk to him again in the future, Dr. Hawk is in there. And I'll find out how that's going, but basically, if you are really, really good at reporting errors in the hangar module, you were able to get into the um, Arena Commander's multiplayer. Um, good luck, guys. Report those errors, get everything working for us. So when we start having our number called, I think I'm number 207,116 or somewhere around there, um, I'll be ready to play. All right. So we've talked about a lot so far, haven't we? So. Ben and Sandy debuted the show over in Santa Monica. It was cute. There were some fun parts, especially in the beginning, where uh, Ben did his little skit about, you know, everyone thinks we're marketing, we're not marketing. And that was pretty cute, pretty nice. Um, but I thought things were going down a little bit at first, and then all of a sudden they got good. The interview with Sean Tracy was good. I think that's who they interviewed, right? And the interview with Disco Lando was pretty awesome. Great job, James. I thought interviewing you was fun. You interviewing him was freaking amazing. So I, I think the show, just like the original Wingman's Hangar, it's going to have to have a couple of episodes to get their legs. But I'm feeling it. And uh, this is one of those shows that us, those of us that like to collaborate and create videos are going to be able to do. It. And listen, Motley... Uh, the Motley Star, well, Star Citizen Motley Collaborators. I've got my green screen studio now all ready for you. So let's do something big. There is not a whole lot of things I think I'm missing except for this. This. A calm comes over the spectrum with a jaw. All it says is an amount of cargo a delicate timetable, and a risky route. You know you've got 42 cubic meters to pack full of profit. We're talking pressurized and shock-resistant construction, so whatever you put in here comes out the same way. You got 
two Arc Duo 400 engines. Their award-winning colloid ion technology gives you maximum fuel efficiency while keeping your SIG low. You come across a couple of pirates. But with a weapon system featuring trusted names like Bering and Kronik, you aren't too worried. Commercial vessel, freelancer, glass. Rig tags look good. Cleared for landing in Area 18. You're the one they come to when they need a job done right. Because you trust one ship. Misc Freelancer. Built for life. Now, when I saw that, I was floored. I loved it. It was awesome. But I heard the voice, and I started going, I know that voice, I know that voice. And I'm looking around, looking around, looking around for things and found an article and saw people talking about it. And then Captain Gloom, who's one of the members of the enablers and in the Star Citizen A thread in the den all the time, she uh, definitely confirmed what I thought. And that was Lance Henriksen. Um, and you know him as Bishop, um, the android on aliens. And that was pretty awesome that they're getting big. I don't know how big of an actor he is, but he's pretty big in my book, being one of those people that saw that in the movie theater when it debuted. So that was pretty awesome. A couple of other things. We're going to take a little bit of a step back to the Around the Verse logo contest. They have three. The three are going to be in that particular episode. Take a look at them. They're using each one. If you have any comments about which one's better, send it in. I'm disappointed that Pappy Boynton, Radar, my guy that made my logo and my set and my outro and all this other stuff. Well, I built my title sequences and my credit sequences, but he built the sequence at the end that's actually there for me to pop videos in so you guys could click on them to see them or subscribe. So that's it. I don't know what else to talk about, except I have this short little interview with Ben, and I did it a couple of days ago. I wanted to do it on Wednesday. He made me do it on Tuesday, so it was before Around the Verse. So it wasn't as full-featured as I thought it was going to be, and I was hoping to get James and Will and a couple other people in the, um, in the interview also. However, I totally forgot it was E3. And they were at the E3 convention um, with Chris demoing the Arena Commander instead of around to be on my show for an interview. How arrogant of me. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. And thank you, Ben, for doing the interview. And after the interview, stick around for another Confession of a Star Citizen Attic. And then I will see you next time. Y'all be safe out there. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Hey everybody, i got another treat for you today. I've got Ben Lesnick, the community manager of Cloud Imperium Games, back with us. How are you, Ben? Good. I don't think I've ever been called a treat before. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I guess after a week, I, I wonder how many people are actually going to be able to watch this with everybody glued to their computers playing Arena Commander right now. Hopefully. Yeah. So you guys have had a huge last seven days with the end of an era with uh, Wingman's Hangar going off with mm -hmm. the last episode of the next great starship, and I'm saying that apprehensively. <laughs> um, and of course, with Arena Commander being dropped right in the beginning of all that. So tell me a little bit about um, the trials and tribulations you guys have had since, or if it's been as good on your end as it has been on our end. It's been some late nights, a lot of... Uh... Last Saturdays, but uh, it 
felt good to get Arena Commander out. It felt good to see the people enjoyed it. And then I felt really good to be able to surprise people with the, uh, the Freelancer and the TNG ship. Uh, yeah. Like coming back to form. You know, you've left the, uh, the next great Starship ships in our hangar for a couple of extra days, and we're beginning to wonder if they're going to stay there for a while. No, no, they should be gone uh, tomorrow or Thursday, slightly before the next patch. Okay, so they're leaving with the next patch. We, we can actually turn them off at any time, but we figured to keep them around to the next patch. Well, that's pretty cool. So, the Freelancers, big, big, big deal. It looks like almost another million dollars in the tank since they were released. I think so. I, I, I try not to follow those numbers, but uh, you can't help but look at the counter. I do the news, right? So I look at the counter. I have to pick things to talk about, right? So tell me what the biggest challenge over the last week has been for your team over in the community management side? Um, well, I mean, just kind of managing the expectations for uh, well, everything, really. I mean, Arena Commander, uh, everybody was ready to murder us. And then, you know, we, we were so sure it was going to be ready that night, but we couldn't say it because, you know, we promised it later in the night and we couldn't. It was, uh, it was a long night of just kind of having to watch the forums rage, knowing we were going to change Chat. their opinion. Yeah. yeah. Chat was uh, enraged. <laughs> I mean, they were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, how, how about the fallout from, and I don't want to bring up bad stuff, you know, I hate doing that, but there has been a lot of comments made, both positive and negative, about the, le the last episode of The Next Great Starship, especially since the website went down again. So Yeah, yeah, I saw that they... Uh, there was an issue with the uh, the poll plugin, basically, with that many people voting at once, it broke the website. Yeah. So, is there anything in the, that's going to be done for the uh, runner-up, not knowing if you know, are we going to be counting hanging chads and dimpled chads for the next few weeks? No, but from the from the votes we did get, it it seems pretty. Yeah, it, it would be incredibly statistically unlikely that the result will be anything else. Okay. And apparently, this is something of a standard with reality shows. I think whenever there's an American Idol phone vote, they. Uh, they break the phone system and uh, so on. So. Well, it's kind of like trying to get tickets for a concert, right? Yeah. Everyone hits everything at once. Not everybody gets to have their chance. I, I expected that. I mean, I, I tried to vote and I couldn't. And I was at work at the time, so it was like, people were like, what are you doing? And I'm sitting there on my iPad trying to vote. And I'm like, nothing, just a guilty pleasure I have. <laughs> it was just not going through. But for me, the team that I thought that... First off, I thought both entries were kick butt. There was no yeah. doubt about it. And I think that was the consensus on your end, yep. too. Yeah. Oh, no question. I mean, more than just these two entries, I mean, a number of the runner ups were amazing. Uh, I think it came down to time and basically presentation at the end. Right. And it was a lot to ask. So the big question, which, you know, Chris drops a lot of bombshells that no one else is ready for him to do at times, oh. right? It is his project. So people have already been gone asking. Is this something that you'll revisit at some time in the future? Uh, it's entirely possible. We, I thought it came together really well. I think everybody had a good time doing it. I think it, it did show you how user-generated content is going to be brought into the game, kind of connect us with the community. And I think we would definitely be interested in doing it again. Okay. When it comes to the freelancers coming out, was this planned to be that part of the weekend to make that like the epic week that it turned out to be, or was it just everything fell in line together? It was everything falling in line. You know, we we, we specifically did not want to have a ship sale before we could prove that Arena Commander was a real thing that you could play. Uh, but it actually just happened that uh, the. Uh, the freelancer was ready at that moment. Uh, in fact, the variance to be ready, the commercial came in at 11.30 morning that Saturday. So, uh, oh, boy. It, uh, so, yeah, it was uh, cutting close. Okay. I know that... I, I would have liked another week to just tease it a little bit, but uh, it worked well. I, I found it quite interesting that the ships were the same ones they data mined out of the... Uh hangar quite a few months yeah. ago so as I'm going back through videos and watching uh, anything FPS's videos on them going oh there are the ships not PBR but there are the ships <laughs> so yep ships uh, they, they were in there and all their animations weren't yet um, but that's that's just the first step with us we got to do the brochure and the commercial and, uh, all right so we, we've all seen a, well not we all have I, I was kind of shocked when I started seeing it going around the forums and chat the other day but there have been some pictures going around of the uh, work being done on the Constellation. I think Sandy put it on her 
Facebook page. Uh, yeah, what's the single, you know, a single comment that you could make based on what you've seen so far? <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> I, I looked I, at one of her pictures. I was just floored. I'm like, oh my god, that's in my hanger. <laughs> so. I think Sandy's allowed to think that stuff. I'm not, so <laughs> leave it at that. Okay, I know that that ship is Chris's baby, so I, I expect that to be one of the biggest ones that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you top the last week? You have a big event tomorrow, in my opinion, something uh, kind of a new era. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, I mean, we're, we're just trying to trying to continue in the footsteps of Wingman's Hangar, creating a show that brings the community into the game. Uh, you know, it's, it's light, hopefully funny. Uh, we're, we're kind of starting the same place Wingman was a year ago, and going from there, hopefully we'll find our feet, and it'll be cool. So do you have a basement there to start the first show in? Uh, we are, we're actually doing all of our... Sh uh, we don't have a set, we're doing it all from our desks. Uh, Okay. In our uh, increasingly crowded office, so you're going to get the real uh, Cloud Imperium experience. No green screen or anything? No floating no heads? <laughs> no, nope, it's all uh, all done right here in the office. So, And when you say in the office, you had alluded to the fact that it's not just your office. It's going to rotate around different offices? Yes, in, in the future, we'll, uh, we don't have a video guy in the UK yet, so it'll be a while before we have that set up, but we, we definitely want to start doing it out of the UK and Austin uh, in the future. Just put Ian on a plane and send him out there. So that's cool. So big, big event tomorrow. So um, we, you know, obviously I'm part of a group that does videos, and we're really interested to see what levity we're going to have this time with being able to create videos for the show. Is it going back to the old, or are we still going to have some? Back to the old, absolutely. We uh, we are trying to, in fact, create more opportunities for you to have videos in the new one. Uh, James is going to be running a fan spotlight where uh, he'll be interviewing you, uh, star citizen content creators. Uh, we're trying to think of all sorts of ways to feature the work the community does. Uh, so a lot more old women's hanger than recent women's hanger. That's good. I know that a lot of people are going to like to hear that. Um, and basically, I, I see a lot of... Uh, talk about other modules coming out and personally I think that the way that things went before which are put something out make it better put something out make it better is that something that you see being more the case and not trying to drop too many things at once like, uh, well we're definitely going to be doing uh, I wouldn't say too many but multiple things at once I mean we've got the FPS guys they're working on their project uh, we've got the guys doing the uh, what people would call the social module there continue to work through all this uh, I think the big thing you're going to see first, though, is iterative changes to dogfighting. Uh, lots of patches uh, as often as weekly uh, as we move towards V1, V2, V3, uh, bringing in a lot more of the features you're waiting for. So I'm waiting for my Avenger. I keep looking at that beautiful ship sitting in my hangar, and I'm dying to jump into it and fly it. But that one shouldn't be too far off. I, I hope so. Um, I was hoping that I was going to have like the team there, but I, I guess my initial... Um, my initial thought was to do this after you guys do the show tomorrow. My expectation is you've already shot the show and it's all ready to go, right? Uh, I'm not ready to go yet, actually. I'm, I'm supposed to go look at an edit of it right after this. So. All right, then we won't keep you. <laughs> so is it gonna, uh, do you have a time slot yet? Uh, we are actually currently debating this afternoon whether or not we should do it same time as Moon's Hangar or move it to three like the other shows. Uh, I'm leaning towards that just... So they're even. Uh, so you're talking about three Pacific time. Three Pacific, yeah. Same, same as the NGS. And, uh, I think three yeah. Eastern time, so you're actually catching Europe at uh, night is a good time. Otherwise, they're waiting a whole cycle to see it. That's true. Well, let me, let me see how the uh, cut looks tonight. <laughs> I'll just okay. based on that. I I, all right. I'm just thinking because I have a huge number of people in my... Uh, organization that are in the uh, UK and Germany so I'm looking at it like you do it like middle of the day then you catch everybody at once otherwise when some people hear about it before they get to see it that's true it's kind of like hearing about Game of Thrones before you get to watch it we could just read the <laughs> just, book they're just not as exciting right <laughs> all right well I'm not going to keep you I want you to go and run thanks for spending a few minutes with me I like doing these short little interviews with you oh um, yeah always available would you be able to get Will for me over the next week or so and tell him I'm coming his way? Sure thing. Uh, he's actually off at E3 today. I let, uh, let him and James go to uh, look at the competition, but uh, he'll so be the, back tomorrow. 
the giant paper mache 300i at E3 didn't happen, did it? <laughs> no, no, we do have a computer set up at the Alienware booth, I believe, okay. and Travis is, Travis is hanging around there showing off the dogfighting module, but I think no. that's the extent of our uh, presentation there. I think you guys should have been there big time. All that Ubisoft, Ubisoft stuff I've seen over the last day has got my kids salivating for like Rainbow Six and stuff. If you had your Star Citizen stuff there, it would have been awesome. Um, bigger, you know, the paper mache 300i that you guys talked about when I was there. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, Another, Ben. Maybe next year. All right. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. This is the new Bat Cave. Okay, I used to stand in front of a green screen and it was getting kind of nuts. I was always getting some artifacting behind me, and I'm going to turn that into a black screen or and a white screen. But in the time being, I've turned uh, the Bat Cave, I guess you want to call it. This is where I do my recording. It's a room in the basement into a studio and started it by painting the wall green. Uh, actually, this is from the Disney collection. It's a bare flat um, latex um, exterior coat, I believe. And it's actually called Gamma Sector Green. The paint um, base that was suggested for making a green screen background was actually on clearance, so I decided to pull the trigger yesterday and for a whopping $23 in paint and another $15 in supplies, I've got me a green wall. So I'm going to try to do my shows down in this room for now on. The next few weeks are going to be applying certain noise canceling items into the room. It's got a carpet now which you can't see because you can only see up to like my shins. Um, and uh, I'm going to put egg crate on the back wall and paint that a different color. I've cut the room in half because I figure green in one half and neutral in the other. That way the green doesn't overpower everything. And also so I could vary the shots. And uh, I'm going to put a desk on the other side of the room. It's a really small room. It's about 9 by 12, maybe maybe 10 by 10. It's, it's not a big room. Just big enough to do my recording, and my idea is to have a desk over there with a computer on it where I'll do my streaming, and then to have this over here. I'm going to have to get a better camera, and uh, that leads me to the point of this. You guys have all helped me get the camera I have now, and unless I start getting a lot more subscribers, I might have to do something like that again where I say, hey, if you feel like it, donate. There's a donate button over at the uh, StarCitizenAA.com website. Um, it's not, um, I'm not going to beg, I'm just going to suggest it once in a while and that's it. So let's move on from there and we're back in my beautiful set created by Radar aka Pappy Boynton. And uh, one thing I'm going to ask him is if he could just touch up the actual uh, resolution I get, make it a tad bit clearer and more defined, but I like this one the best. I've played with them a lot. I think what I'm going to be doing in the future is looking to get more of a video based one. So there's things going on in the background and uh, that's why I had him leave that window over there open. And uh, this is the screen. So the window over here I could have like ships and stuff flying by or play like uh, dogfighting stuff in it, and the screen is going to be where I have my news items. 